think the Third World War is a bit uh, extreme, to be honest. I think it's way, it's, it, it's too exaggerated and people will just dismiss it. Nationalism, however, is another problem. I think we're seeing a disease of nationalism at the moment, perhaps the last gasp of nationalism. Uh, Brexit, for example, uh, Trump, America first. Uh, the nation state was created in the 19th century um, and it was, it was a, a response to modernity. And, but very early in the process, Lord Acton, a British historian in the late 19th century, said the nation state had a fatal flaw. He said that the emphasis in the nation state on ethnicity, culture and language would make it very, very difficult for people who did not fit that national profile. And he predicted with horrible accuracy, he said in some cases, they could even be enslaved or exterminated. And it was not long after that, after he issued that, in, uh, that the young Turks massacred over a million Armenians <coughs> to create a purely Turkic state. Uh, we had the Holocaust. And at the end of the century, we had the Bosnian massacres, uh, a, a result of a, some na a nasty form of Serbian uh, nationalism. And we're seeing it in Brexit. Uh, after the vote, after the referendum three years ago, uh, hate crime in, in the London, in the first two weeks after, after the referendum, increased by 48%. And at that time, I was a, a, a trustee of the British Museum, and visitors were coming into the museum and yelling at members of the museum staff who were clearly not Caucasian, saying, now you've got to go home. This, it, this I think, is, is, is extremely dangerous. We can never say never again. Uh, we have said never again after the Nazi Holocaust, but then we saw Bosnia. Uh, and I think this, uh, it, it's, it's also irrational because to hive yourself off from the rest of the world is now a basic denial of the reality of our life because we're not a nation state anymore, we're becoming more global all the time. Uh, the separation of church and state is a, is a good thing uh, because in some respects because it liberates religion from the inherent injustice of the state. No state has ever achieved total justice. There's always been inequity. Uh, but that doesn't mean that religion people can just slink off into their churches and mosques and synagogues and pray and ignore the plight of the world. Because I'll be saying tonight, the great prophets... Jesus, Mohammed, they were all deeply political people. Confucius uh, was training up a, a cadre of scholars who would be able to instruct kings and princes to behave in a more compassionate, respectful way to all um, and to mitigate the essential injustice of the state. So, um, to, so to say that... Uh, religion and politics are uh, separate. Mm -hmm. Jesus wouldn't have believed in that. Jesus was a deeply political man, uh, not because he was a revolutionary or anything like that, but because uh, he was trying to create an alternative society to the Roman Empire that was very oppressive in his part of the world in Galilee, uh, where people would be kind to one another. Um, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, it's very much, we see it in, in context, being spoken to people who could, to vill villagers in Galilee, who could expect only one meal a day, and who could be, if they didn't pay the Roman taxes, would be hauled in front of a tribunal and have their land confiscated. Our Father in heaven, may your empire come, your will be done, not that of Rome. Uh, give us this day our daily bread, and do not bring us to the tribunal uh, and deliver us from evil. Uh, in, in, in Britain, uh, there's just total disinterest in it. It's one of the worst markets for my books, mm. so I'm very grateful to other parts of the world for, for buying them. 
Um, though my friends think I'm mad to be writing about this discredited stuff, but they're not angry about it. They just think it's pointless. In France, there's a real uh, animus against religion, uh, that which is which is quite different. And but uh, and I this uh, hatred of this we've seen the horror of New Zealand. This has been, and I'm not surprised about about this uh, New Zealand horror, because this is rumbling at the moment a lot, and it's been enhanced by 9/11, and then it's enhanced by uh, guilt to uh, our behaviour. You didn't take part in this the hideous business of the Iraq War, where or the war in Afghanistan, where shows that when civilian casualties were horrifying, but we never really mentioned them in the West. We quite rightly uh, honoured our soldiers who'd come home, but we never thought about men, women and children who were just killed because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, had nothing to do with the struggle. So we've, we've, we're in a very, very bad place, uh, but there are people like what you're trying to do here in this institute, to try and change things, to try and make people aware, aware of the dangers of this. Because we cannot survive in a world where this kind of hatred is, is running rife.